this week on One Devotion. One EuroLeague rookie recounts his road back from a devastating injury. Another makes clear why dunking attracted him to the sport of basketball. And a third rookie proves that basketball is alive and well in Siberia. All that plus the most spectacular moments in a week full of dramatic games. It may be hard to find a player more grateful just to take the floor in a Turkish Airlines EuroLeague game than guard Edgar Sosa of Dinamo Banco di Sardegna Sassari, who nearly lost his career to a gruesome leg injury while competing for the Dominican Republic national team three years ago. It was a game we was playing against Panama in the um, Olympic qualifier in 2011. And, um, a game, it was out of reach, it was up about 30 points, and I remember coach telling me to keep penetrating so I can get to the free throw line. And I penetrated and I fell, and I felt like maybe my shoe had busted or something, I didn't feel anything, and then uh, when I got up, I saw that my leg was completely broken and it was, it was devastating. Thus began Sosa's greatest challenge. He missed two full seasons coming back and suffered a significant setback in the middle. I tried being this competitive guy. I tried to come back after nine months and join the national team and everybody could see that I wasn't ready. I was still on the court hobbling around and what happened was that I started putting all my weight on my left leg and I broke my left foot. So now at this point I'm dealing with two injuries and now I have to go back to rehab and not only work on my leg but now work on my foot as well. Further complicating matters was the fact that Sosa was not under contract to any club. So he went through his rehab virtually alone, with his mother for moral support and a personal trainer to push him. I had to pretty much wing it because I'd never been injured before and I never had to go through a rehab process. So it was kind of like reading up on my injury, learning the things to do and not to do, what to do on the fourth week and what to do on the tenth week and the progression that I should be making. So it was, uh, it was crazy to do and it's something that I look back on now and I'm like, I can't believe that, you know, I went through all this without professional help, even though I consider my trainer to be a professional. But it's like we didn't know what to do and what steps to take. We just woke up every day and our method was if you feel a little bit better today than you did yesterday, then we're doing something right and that's what we did for 18 months. For Sosa, dealing with the pain was one of the greatest challenges of his rehab. And I will always ask God, you know, um, as long as you could take the pain away, I'll learn how to play basketball again, I'll, I'll live in the gym, I'll learn how to shoot left hand layups again. Just take the pain away and once the pain was away, uh, I just lived in the gym and just got my game back. Just getting back to where he was before wouldn't be enough, however. I missed two full seasons and um, people are getting better. They're playing against the best competition. They, they, they're playing against the toughest guys in practice. That makes you better. I didn't have none of that. It was just me, some weights, a pool, cardio machine. I didn't have the bumping and the grinding that you go through in a basketball game, so I had to kind of catch up quick. Naturally, Sosa had a lot of fears during his comeback. I was afraid that my speed wouldn't come back. I was afraid that I just I wouldn't be the same basketball player because you know what, what people say is that once you go through a big injury like this, you're never the same. And once you go through surgery, you're never the same. So I was just like, man, like, why can't you be the same? And what doctors told me is that because of the rod I have in, in my bone, inside my tibia, it'll never happen again. So that's what I take with me to the bank every day. It's like, I'm gonna penetrate, I'm gonna get in there, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that because I know it's not gonna happen again. And, that's how I play the game. Sosa finally returned to action last season with Ratio Farm Ulm of Germany, and this season made his EuroLeague debut with Sassari. I think through my adversity and through my trying times, uh, God still has found a way for me to advance. It's like, um, it was my first year when I, when I finally came back last year, I was able to play in the Euro Cup. And that was, that was big for me, you know, uh, being a guy who pretty much didn't play the last two seasons to come back and be on a Euro, a Euro Cup team, it was, it was huge. 
And now this year to be on a EuroLeague team in the highest level of basketball in all of Europe is just like, you know, God has blessed me like tremendously. Few Euroleague fans had seen FC Barcelona point guard Thomas Satoransky play before the start of this season, but his all-around aggressiveness and explosive dunks have quickly made him one of the competition's most exciting players to watch. That's no surprise, considering that dunking was one of the things that drew Satoransky to the sport of basketball. I always like the, the factor of dunking in basketball. It kind of uh, bring me to the game of basketball. So I was always practicing after the practice, the, the dunks. Coach you know, doesn't like to see that much, but I think I developed the jumping ability and uh, especially the dunks, thing, thanks of that. Satoransky believes that dunking is not only the best way to entertain fans, but also a good momentum boost for his team. I think it's a spectacular aspect of the game and every fan wants to see at least one dunk in a game. It kind of hyped the team up. I feel a lot of energy when I dunk, so every time I have the chance I, I try to dunk it in a game. Thomas has had to work hard to become a two-meter point guard, able to pass the ball, help on the boards and scoring many ways. But he takes no credit for his impressive athletic skills. I always try to be the complete player. But, you know, more naturally, I think I was uh, athletic, you know, it came um, after my parents, which, I, which both of them played volleyball, so I think it came from there. To be fast, to, to jump like that, I think it came from nature. Although he is from the Czech Republic, Satoransky has spent most of his pro career in Spain, first with Baloncesto Sevilla for five years and then joining Barcelona last summer. He's sure that his decision to move south at age 18 helped him improve his basketball skills. When I came to the Spain, I had to really develop those things, like was the dribbling, you know, passing the ball. I always was a team player, but you know, those details I had to work out and uh, like I say also tactical things, like to think of the game a little bit more. When the opportunity presents itself, however, he loves to showcase his dunking skills, as he has done while winning contests in both the Czech Republic and Spain. I was in the Czech League two times and one, one time in ACB. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's a great to have an opportunity to try at least one dunking contest. And, you know, it's a great, it's about creativity. And I always enjoy to create a new new dunk or try the new things. I hopefully can, can enjoy a, another one in the future. Contests are great fun, but if he has to choose, Thomas says that nothing beats a good dunk in an important game. The importance of the, of the games are always higher than a dunking contest. It's more about fun, but when you, when you dunk in some really important games, uh, it's a great feeling because you're not even you dunking, you also helping your team to win. Of course, all fans find dunks thrilling, but how does flying through the air and slamming the ball during a big game feel for the dunker himself? For me, it's one of the best feelings I think you, you can have in a game. You, you're playing with a lot of energy then, and you can play better defense, I think. It all comes from there. Let's find out what happened in the last round of matches. Unix Kazan made it four wins in a row over struggling Shalgiris Kaunas. Nizhny Novgorod gained a huge road triumph over Anadolu Efes and Real Madrid eased to victory in Sassari. Unix Kazan continued its rejuvenated form, claiming its fourth successive win under new coach Evgeny Pashutin and maintaining its push for the top 16, as informed duo Keith Langford and Dior Fisher both scored 16 points to defeat Jalgiris, which has now lost four out of five. 
That result meant Nizhny Novgorod simply had to win in Istanbul against Anadolu FS to avoid elimination, and the Russian team duly obliged to hold on in a tight finish. Real Madrid was pushed hard for three quarters by Dinamo Sassari, but Felipe Reyes keyed a big fourth quarter for the Spanish team, which eventually won comfortably. Real Madrid are back on top of Group A with FS sure to finish at least second, while Onyx, Shangiris and Nizhny will fight it out for two top 16 places. Alba Berlin secured a top 16 berth thanks to its win at Limoges and Cedevita's loss to Maccabi, while Seska fought back to win in overtime at Unicaja. In the game of the week, Seska Moscow appeared to be on course for its first defeat of the season, as intense Unicaja Malaga built up a 20-point lead. But Nando de Colo inspired a remarkable comeback to force overtime and eventually scored the winning points. Another already qualified team, champions Maccabi Electra, had five players scoring in double figures to claim victory at Sedevita. That left open the door for Alba Berlin to seal the group's final top 16 berth, and the German team duly obliged, despite a spirited challenge from Limoges, as Jamel McLean made the difference with 18 points. Seska and Maccabi are guaranteed first and second place respectively, while Unicaja and Alba will fight it out for third place in the final round. Three Thursday thrillers in Group C saw EA7 Milan reach the top 16, Fenerbahce steal one of basketball's toughest road wins and Bayern Munich triumph in its last home game. Barcelona hosted Fenerbahce and got 25 points from Marcelino Huertas, but the visitors found a hero in Nemanja Bielica, who forced overtime and then hit the game-winning layup to end Barcelona's unbeaten run. Dusko Savanovic exploded for a career-high 31 points as Bayern gave its home fans one last EuroLeague thrill this season and eliminated visiting PGE Turuv. Having advanced with Bayern's victory, EA7 Milan celebrated with a tight home win over Panathinaikos as Daniel Hackett poured in 21 points. Despite its first loss, Barcelona has practically clinched first place ahead of Fenerbahce, while Panathinaikos will finish third and Milan fourth. Olympiacos produced a stirring comeback to defeat Cervena Zvezda, Laboral Kucha edged an all-Spanish derby, and Neptunas claimed a big win over Galatasaray. Laboral Kucha claimed the third qualification place in Group D with a high-scoring victory over Valencia Basket, which is eliminated after 21 points for Fabien Couser, securing the home team's progression. In another meeting of teams battling for a place in the top 16, Neptunas Kaipeda was inspired by 23 points from the all-action Davidas Gaelius to secure a priceless victory, as 24 points from Zoran Ersek, who played every second of the game, proved in vain for the visitors. And Olympiakos made sure of top place by defeating another already qualified team, Servena Zvezda, with a late flurry of triples in Pireus. Olympiakos has won the group, Servena Zvezda and Laboral Kucha will play each other for second place, and Neptunas has the edge in the battle for fourth. Hello and welcome to Who Said Newcomer. This week we are with Real Madrid's Gustavo Ayon and Casey Rivers. Hi guys, as always let's see how much you know about your city and team. Let's begin with the questions. First question, what's a well-known monument of Madrid? Puerta de Cala, Pat Plaza Mayor. Nice, first point goes to Gustavo. <laughs> What's the population of the Comunidad de Madrid? Six million. Five. Eight. What is a typical Spanish dish? Paella. <laughs> Casey takes the lead. Who's the captain of the team? Felipe I'd say that's a tie. <laughs> Who is the longest serving teammate? Felipe Reyes. Felipe Reyes. Casey is steaming ahead now. Who's the club president? Well done, Gustavo, you've pulled a point back. 
What are the colours of the team logo? Blue, blue white. yellow, and white. Oh, no. <laughs> blue, white. He missed the colour, though. Swink goes to Gustavo. He came closest. Last question. When was the team founded? The 1930s. In the años 30. 1930s, 1940s. Gustavo Ayon has come back to win 4-3. That was great, guys. Thank you so much. Nizhny Novgorod forward Semen Antonov has travelled further than most players to reach the heights of the Turkish Airlines Euroleague. Antonov grew up in the heart of Siberia, whose famous frozen climate, he admits, did not always make things easy for an aspiring young basketball star. And when it's 40, it's very difficult to wait for the bus, especially in the training after the training, because you're tired and you need to wait for the bus to minus 40 and stay for maybe 20-30 minutes while you're waiting for the bus. However, Antonov is also keen to dispel the notion that life in Siberia is unbearably difficult emphasizing that when you get used to the cold weather, the quality of life in his hometown of Nizhnevartovsk is good. Ну, человек привыкает ко всему, а тем более если ты с самого детства там, то есть ты родился, у тебя сразу иммунитет вырабатывается с детства. Ну, понятно, что когда минус 40, ты одеваешь двое подштанников, двое варежек и всё в порядке, ты справляешься. И в принципе Можно не выживать, а люди спокойно там до сих пор живут, и город развивается, и никому это не мешает. А живется очень хорошо. У нас, правда, очень холодно бывает зимой, но медведи у нас не гуляют. A major breakthrough in Antonov's career came in 2011, when he was selected for his national team by Russia's coach at the time, David Blatt, who subsequently won the EuroLeague title with Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv last season. Antonov admits that earning the recognition of a major figure like Blatt gave him a lot of confidence. Ну, конечно, в первую очередь это было очень приятно получить от Дэвида Блата такие такие рекомендации и теплые слова. Это было в сборной, мой первый год в сборной, и я был счастлив в первую очередь, что я попал в национальную команду, и тем летом нам удалось завоевать бронзовые медали Евробаски. Blatt sometimes referred to him as the man from nowhere. But Antonov didn't mind the joke, especially when the national team matched its performance at the London Olympics one year later, and he wore another bronze medal around his neck. Наверно стоит признать, что мало кто из россиян знает, где находится Нижний Вартовск, и не говоря о том, что там есть баскетбол. Мне кажется, север ассоциируется со всеми. Это медведи, нефть, круглогодичная зима, и поэтому Давид Блат так и сказал. Now in his fifth season with Nizhny, Antonov was a key to the team qualifying for this, its first EuroLeague campaign. He has not forgotten his hometown and hopes that more young Siberians follow in his footsteps soon. When I started playing, there was one basketball hall, which was two shoes and a good covering. It was possible to play normal training. Now, Есть три-четыре хороших фока, где занимаются детские спортшколы, да, детские секции. Sinan Güler from Galatasaray Liv Hospital of Istanbul. I'm here today with my teammate and friend Pietro Aradori. How are you, Pietro? Fine, I'm fine. Thank you, Sinan. Um, now I will try to teach him some Turkish, which is quite difficult language. Uh, first lesson, just to introduce himself to the people when he meets somebody on the street, when he's sightseeing, uh, he can say, Hello, my name is Pietro Aradori. Um, it's Merhaba, uh, be, benim adım Pietro Aradori. Okay, one word for time. Merhaba. Merhaba. Benim adım. Benim adım. Adım. Yes. Merhaba, 
Pine Harden, Pietra Radori. Great. <laughs> Quite fast. <laughs> How are you? Is Nusselson? Nusselson. Great. Nusselson. And Iim. I'm good. And Iim, San. So I'm good. How are you? I mean, uh, I'm good. How I'm good. Iim. Iim. Yes. And San is when you're like, for example, asking me back. Sen. Yes. Sen. Great. Uh, next one, let's go into basketball a little bit maybe. Um, you can say, pass me the ball. Uh, pass ver. Pass ver. That's easy. Water is su. Su. Yes. And when, you say, when you're asking for something, you can say, Ala bilir miyim? Ala bilir miyim? Ala bilir miyim? Ala bilir miyim? Close enough. What does, what does it mean? It's can I have? Can I have? Yes. Like, su is what? Yes. Su, su ala bilir miyim? Ah, su ala bilir miyim? Close enough. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, we will try to help out more on Pietro and getting used to Turkish culture and language. And again, thanks for watching. Thank you, guys. Dusko Savanovic of FC Bayern Munich saved his best for his team's last Turkish Airlines EuroLeague home game of the season. Savanovic scored a career-high 31 points, including 14 in the fourth quarter, to lead Bayern to a come-from-behind 95-89 victory over PGE Turov Skorzelek. His outstanding performance also netted Savanovic round nine B-Win MVP honours. Savanovic was not only efficient with his shooting, 7 of 10 on two-point shots, 4 of 6 from behind the three-point arc and 5 of 6 from the foul line, but he also totaled 6 rebounds, 2 assists and 2 blocks for a performance index rating of 37, which was the highest of any player in round 9 of the regular season. His index rating also established a record for Bayern Munich players in the EuroLeague. This was the second time in Savanovic's career that he was named Player of the Week. Now let's check out the top five plays of this round. Number five, Istanbul, Turkey. Nizhny Novgorod fighting for their lives, needing a win to stay in the top 16 race. Dmitry Kvostov secures a huge road victory with a nerveless three-pointer inside the final 10 seconds, making sure of the win for Nizhny Novgorod. Number four, Piraeus, Greece. Olympiakos possession. The ball is going to come out to Tremel Darden. Here he is, and now up he goes, avoiding a challenge in midair and unleashing an awesome slam. Nice no-look pass. What about the finish? Number three, Klaipeda, Lithuania. Final stages of a huge game for Neptunas. The steal from Valdas Vasilius, and it's on to the outstanding Davidus Gailius to finish a lightning fast break with an emphatic dunk. Neptunas Klaipeda with a huge win. Number two, Barcelona, Spain. The dying seconds of a heavyweight clash. Fenerbahce trailing by two. Bogdan Bogdanovic and Jan Vesely can't score. But Nemanja Bielica arrives to finish the job and send us to overtime. And the number one play of the week from Limoges, France. Limoges in possession, looking for an opening. It comes to Trent, plays dead, and he blasts to the basket. An incredible two-handed slam. The play of the week from Trent, plays dead. The last three top 16 qualification and the final standings in every group are at stake as the regular season roars to a finish in round 10 next week. In Group A, the Russian derby between Nizhny Novgorod and Unix Kazan comes with do-or-die drama as the hosts get behind Tarant Kinsey in hope of a historic qualification, while the visitors look to former EuroLeague winner Nikos Zizis to lead the way to the top 16. Also in the Group A, Jalgiris needs to win at home against Dinamo Sassari, while Real Madrid hosts Anadolu Efes for first place in the game of the week. 
In Group B, two teams already in the top 16 look to send a message for the next round as defending champion Maccabi and highlights King Alex Tyus welcome double-double threat Vladimir Golubovic and Unikaha for a battle at Nokia Arena. Group B finishes with undefeated Seska facing Limoges in Moscow, while Alba Berlin hosts Sedevita. Fans in Athens will enjoy a classic to close Group C, as Panathinaikos and Barcelona meet for the 32nd time, with two superstars, Antonis Fotsis for the Greens and Juan Carlos Navarro for the visitors, ready to add another thrilling chapter to this great rivalry. Group C will be complete when PGE Turuv hosts EA7 Milan and Bayern Munich visits Fenerbahce Ulker. In Group D, Euroleague newcomer Neptunas Klaipeda looks for a first road win that's worth a top 16 qualification as Davidas Gailius leads the charge against eliminated Valencia and its veteran leader, Pau Ribas. Also in Group D, Galatasaray must beat visiting Olympia Costa to have any hope of advancing, while Cervena Zvezda hosts Laboral Kucha with second place on the line. All this coming next week in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague regular season.